Using an amphibious assault ship, a type of amphibious warfare ship, the objective of an amphibious assault is to land and reinforce ground forces on enemy territory. As a result of the design's evolution from aircraft ships that were transformed into helicopter carriers, they are commonly mistaken for traditional fixed-wing aircraft carriers. Modern ships often feature a nice deck and have the ability to accommodate amphibious landing craft. All the way around, current secondary aircraft carriers for fixed-wing aircraft include some amphibious assault ships. An amphibious assault ship's mission is fundamentally distinct from that of a typical aircraft carrier. Its aviation facilities are mostly utilized to host helicopters that aid ground forces rather than supporting strike planes. However, some are able to carry out the sea control function by landing on an airplane like the Harrier or the new F-35B variation of the Lightning II fighters for fighter patrol and choppers for anti-submarine warfare, or by serving as a secure base for a considerable number of STOL fighters able to operate in air support for an amphibious assault unit on land. Air cushion hovercraft and LCUs are among the landing craft that the majority of these ships can assist or transfer. The biggest fleet of these ships is operated by the United States Navy, which also operates ships from the nearly similar WASP class, which made its debut in 1989, and the America class, which made its debut in 2014. Brazilian Maritime Forces, the Egyptian Navy, the Royal Australian Navy, the French Navy, and the Chinese People's Liberation Army Navy amphibious assault ships are used by the Italian Navy, Spanish Navy, Republic of Korea Navy, South Korean Navy, and the Korean Navy. A term that is widely used to describe a variety of ships is amphibious assault ship. All large deck amphibious ships are subject to this regulation, such as the Landing Platform Helicopter LBH, the Landing Helicopter Assault LHA, and the Touchdown Helicopter Dock LHD. An essential part of the country's ability to project power anywhere around the world is amphibious assault vessels. The crew's usual workday can last anywhere from 8 to 12 hours, depending on their tasks. On the 24,000-square-foot WASP-class ship, which is equipped with the full complement of heavy naval and marine equipment, there is room for approximately 1,000 crew members and 1,600 soldiers who are already on board. Following the morning brief, the crew continues their training all day long by taking part in meetings, lectures, spot inspections, and other routine chores. Despite the rigorous work, sailors manage to fit in and exercise throughout the day. They were considering the onboard treasures. On the mess decks, they form a line in anticipation of the delectable meals that have been lovingly prepared for them. Satellite television and arcade, and a state-of-the-art multimedia resource center are a few of the entertainment features. To help them sleep soundly at night, sailors are provided with compact, semi-private quarters. In order to offer the crew supplies, the ship also has a grocery store on board. To support operations ashore, these ships are equipped with a wide range of armaments that are securely kept in the ship's armories. An instrument used to keep the aircraft carrier running safely is the general assessment. Due to its better offshore combat capabilities, they frequently view the aircraft carrier as a representation of complete naval power and a nation's strength. A regular general evaluation is crucial to preventing any potential illnesses, injuries, or accidents that can occur on board and to determine what can be done to reduce the risk that they will occur. It is essential to recognize potential threats since it determines the next step in the process. A systematic approach is required to carry out any general assessment in order to attain the faultless precision and thoroughness that it is possible to achieve. For reliable application, they employ the training technique. Continuous, flexible, and routine reviews are a part of the warship's general assessment, which improves safety while reducing environmental effects due to the fact that risk is never a set-in-stone idea. Risk mitigation calls for knowledge, training, and a specific attitude among people toward problems. In the decision-making process that an organization goes through while conducting the general evaluation of the warship, general awareness and continual attention on the part of the personnel involved are all variables that are crucial. All manner of weaponry, from grenade launchers to assault and sniper rifles, are meticulously stocked in these places, which are crowded with them. Whilst class ships, carried and landed personnel vehicles, artillery ammunition, and numerous supplies in support of the amphibious assault mission ashore. Using amphibious assault vehicles, or AADES, Marines are transported from ship to shore while being supplied with supplies and ammunition. AAVEs may travel up to 200 miles inland. 
Modern warships are outfitted with an enhanced welding deck at the back that is regularly filled with water to make it easier to deploy and recover amphibious landing craft. Depending on the class, each ship in the amphibious fleet has space for up to 52 vehicles on its deck. 21 combat-ready marines or 10,000 pounds of cargo can be transported on AAVS, which have a top water speed of 30 miles per hour. On land, the eight-wheel drive vehicle can travel up to 45 miles per hour through challenging terrain. Marines go through ship-to-shore training to safeguard the safety of ship-to-shore capabilities and to enhance their ability to respond swiftly to global threats in challenging marine situations. After practicing various maneuvers and other aquatic operations while submerged, the drivers drive the AAVS into the flooded weld deck of the amphibious assault ship as the training's culmination. A WASP-class ship, for example, has a 13,000-square-foot weld deck that can accommodate two landing craft utilities, or three fully laden LCA hovercraft, in addition to the AAVS monorail trains can go up to 600 feet per minute as they transfer cargo and supplies from staging and storage rooms to the welding deck, which is connected to the sea via large gates in the ship's stern. There the cargo vehicles and soldiers are loaded onto the landing boats for the trip to the shore. The enormous flight deck, which has room for 30 or more planes and more than 200 sailors and marines, serves as another launch platform for an amphibious assault ship. The aircraft may be stored, taken off, and landed on the flight deck, which is more than two acres in size. Everything needs to be done to shield the crew and the deck from the sweltering jet exhaust, from whirling chopper rotor blades to ground-associated equipment for the aircraft's safety. Flight deck crew are highly skilled professionals working in the dynamic, well-coordinated flow of aircraft operation. They are responsible for completing vital, specialized jobs. Flight operations are not a straightforward assignment. During aircraft launch and recovery operations, each individual is recognized by a color-coded jersey that identifies a certain duty in specified area. Depending on the task, an amphibious assault ship might embark on a variety of helicopters and planes with short takeoff and vertical landing capabilities. As an illustration, consider the F-35B Joint Strike Fighter or the McDonnell Douglas AV-8B Harrier II. The flight elevator is chained to the storage space for these aircraft in the hangar bay area. When maintenance is required, the chains are removed, and the aircraft's nose gear is attached to a towing truck. After removing the aircraft from the lift, the towel vehicle moves it into the hangar bay area. One of the maintenance crew is present in the cockpit at all times while the operation is underway. The nose gear of the tow truck is detachable once the aircraft is positioned inside the hangar space and chained back to the deck. The M60 Seahawk V22 Osprey VTOL tilt rotors, CH-53 Stallion, and AH-1Z Super Cobra are just a few of the helicopters that are flown by amphibious assault ships in addition to the Stovall aircraft. Some of these aerial wonders are very beneficial to the Marine Corps' operations and training exercises. For example, quick roping is one of the most common infiltration techniques used by the Marines to position troops at a certain location from the air. The rope is kept in place on the ground and kept from twisting with the help of a sandbag at the end. It makes use of a bar attached to the fuselage of an aircraft by a thick rope that moves quickly. Professionals mount and lower the rope to the ground while donning thick, heat-resistant gloves. In swift rope insertions, special operators are not fastened to the rope. Instead, they can only stay secure by maintaining a solid grip with their hands and feet. Because of this, the action is dangerous. The amphibious assault ships and their soldiers, who wield incredible force and maintain a presence, are the cornerstone of the U.S. Navy's current defense capabilities. What do you think about this billion-dollar ship? Please share your thoughts on this in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. While you're there, please turn on the notification bell to ensure you receive all our upcoming uploads. I hope you had a great time watching the video. We'll meet at the next one.